So we've all come up against those opponents with those tricky, nasty serves, and you're struggling to return them, and they're getting a lot of cheap points. You know the feeling, right, Dan? What's going on guys? It's Dan and Tom here from the Table Tennis Daily Academy and today we're going to take a look at five key tips to improve your return of serve. Now you saw we made a lot of blunders there Tom, a lot of mistakes and it happens to everyone. It does. Everyone's come up against those opponents with a nasty serve and you're not sure what to do with it, you're struggling to return or perhaps you get it on the table but the return's too weak and you're under pressure early in the point and that's difficult to recover. So if you can improve these returns, we'll give you a few key things to look out for, it will make a big difference to your game. Now in this video, we're not gonna go through every single type of serving table tennis because there's so many variations and ways to do it. We're gonna take a look at the key things to look out for, which is gonna give you a better foundation and a better way just to actually receive these serves. So let's get straight into tip number one. Okay, so tip number one is watching closely the bat angle and the contact on the ball. Now when you come up against these players with these nasty spin serves that are awkward to return, it's very easy to get distracted by the big and complicated movements, but we wanna really focus closely on the bat angle and the contact on the ball. So you really need to focus in on when the ball makes contact with the bat, what is happening? Are they brushing underneath the ball for backspin? Are they coming around the side or brushing up for side spin or top spin? Or are they just shunting the ball through with not much brushing contact and getting a float serve? So it's key we watch the ball as it contacts the bat and what the angle is. Now a common error we do see where players lose out on focusing on the contact and the angle is they spend too much time looking at the ball being thrown up when someone serves. Now this distracts you and you need to really focus in on that contact. Okay, so tip number two, which follows on from the angle and the contact point, and that is looking for the cues of your opponent. Now every single table tennis player in the world has their own way of serving, their own unique quirks about them, and many players give off different telltale signs in terms of how they're gonna serve. Now for example, many players that do a long fast serve often their bat draws back very far. So straight away you can now go, oh, the, the, the bat's gone far back, I can likely now expect a long serve. So another really useful cue to look out for from your opponent is the acceleration and the bat speed through the ball. And this gives you a good indication of the amount of spin you're likely to come up against. If they've got a quick acceleration brushing through under the ball, it's gonna have a lot more spin than a slow and steady contact. Okay, so the third cue is keep an eye on your opponent's elbow. So if you see the elbows come in higher as they throw the ball up to serve, now there's a good chance there's gonna be side spin on the ball. It's pretty much impossible to get backspin on the ball when the elbow is high. Now, when the opponent throws the ball in the air and the elbow is level, they're gonna get backspin or float. So let's have a look. Elbow's level, now they're gonna come in this way, and you can keep an eye on the elbow to see what spin is on the ball. Exactly right, and another good cue you can use is your opponent's body position and the way they address the table. If they're coming around and turning the shoulders a lot, they're likely, the serve is gonna go across to the forehand side. If they're staying open with their body position, it's quite likely the serve is gonna go into the backhand half. So the way your opponent addresses the table and their body position can give you a clue on the direction of the serve too. So why is it important to understand the cues of your opponent? Well, it just gives you more time and that allows you to play a very effective shot because you've got more time to work out what spins on the ball, you can get in position and be ready for the return of serve. Okay, so tip number three is understanding and reacting to different spins. So here we need to look at what we need to do when a side spin comes in, when a back spin comes in, or a top spin, and how we adjust the racket angle and what we actually do to react to that stimulus coming from the serve. So let's take a look at some examples. Whew. Now we've all seen that players misreading the spin. Yeah, it's very easy to do if you're not really concentrating and you're not going against the spin. So I've seen from my mistake there, the ball's flown up and over to the right hand side. So when that situation arises again, I need to make sure I aim the opposite direction to Dan's spin. So my ball's gone over to the right. This time I need to make sure I aim over to my left hand side and go against that side spin. So let's have another look if I do it correctly now. So I've angled my bat down this way against the spin and that's what's kept the ball low and onto the table as opposed to flying up and long. Now this applies to all different actions of serves as well. If I do the jab serve for example and I come around the side of the ball, Tom will need to still go against the spin. So let's see what happens if I do a jab serve. 
So there, Tom is very well, it's gone against my spin, and managed to control it through. Now a great way to simplify this going against the spin is really paying attention to where your opponent's bat starts on the serve. So you want to aim towards where that bat is starting. So if Dan's done the jab serve, the bat is starting over to that right hand side, therefore I need to aim to the right hand side. Now if Dan was doing a backhand serve, his bat again is starting over to my right hand side and that's where I need to aim. So if Dan does the backhand serve and I aim to the left, let's see what happens. So I've gone with the spin, it's gone off. So his bat starts over to the right, I need to aim over to the right. So over to that right hand side and that's what's counteracting the spin. So that's a really nice way to simplify. Aim for where the server's bat starts the action. Okay, so tip four is shot selection. Now in the previous tip we looked at how to control side spin. But now we're going to take a look at being more positive, how we can flick these balls and also look for the long ball. When players do very tricky serves, often they drift long because they're putting a lot of acceleration into the ball. They're trying to get lots of spin, maximum spin, and often this drifts long. So we can look at how to top spin these balls and be positive with our receiver serve. So probably our most important tip in this whole video is when players do tricky, nasty serves, they drift long as we mentioned. I'm going to do one to Tom now and let's see how he responds. Okay. Nice. So there Tom read the long side spin serve and went for the top spin shot. Now Tom was able to read very quickly that my serve was coming half long along there simply by the speed the ball came in, how much backswing I had on the serve like we mentioned earlier and also where the ball lands. If someone serves and they land the ball very close to their white line, it's going to go long. It's very hard to serve short if the ball lands on this white line. So it's a really key point to pick up the first bounce on the server side of the table and also having that mindset of looking for these topspin shots. If you're not prepared and ready for the topspin and you're just trapped in that habit of pushing, you're never going to spot these ones that come long or half long. So you've got to be ready for that topspin and then step in if it does come short. And with this topspin shot, you can add your own spin, own topspin to the ball, which neutralizes a lot of the spin yeah. coming from the serve. If you're just pushing and getting passive, the spin is a lot more reactive on the rubber and it will fly off like we've seen in the examples. Yeah, and then that's the key thing is your topspin strokes can very easily handle the spin and you, you can guide it. So if I do another side spin serve, I'll make it tricky, I'll do a jab serve. This time, Tom is going to look to see if it comes long. Okay. Ready? Nice. So that was a half long serve, it just drifted long. If Tom would have pushed that, it would have popped up and I could have gone for the attack. Tom waited for it and went for the top spin. That's exactly right. So a lot of this tip comes down to mindset and looking for that first opportunity to top spin, whether it's a long ball or a half long ball, look for that opportunity to top spin and don't get too trapped in that passive pushing return game. Yeah. Now guys, of course it's important that not always it will come long. So if it does come short, we want to be looking for a flick shot, ideally. You want to be, put a nice bit of pressure on your opponent. Doesn't have to be a really hard, fast flick, but with good quality. So now if I do a short serve, Tom, first of all, has got to look to see if it's true backspin, where you'll have to touch it back or push it. But if it's side spin, he can go for the flick. So, ready, Tom? So there, that was a side spin, top spin serve. My back angle was pointing down, so Tom was able to flick through the ball. Now I'll do another serve, this time, I was side spin back spin. My angle wasn't completely down, it was more level. So I was able to come underneath the ball more and Tom went for the push. And again, this comes down to that shot selection. My first choice in my head is can I top spin that ball? If not, maybe I can play a positive flick. And the third choice, okay, I can't do either of those attacks. I'm gonna have to push this ball or touch it short. And again, it comes down to reading that spin by looking at the bat angle, the contact, and understanding what you need to do to adapt in each situation. Okay, so I'm gonna give Tom a random serve now, at random, okay. let's see how you respond. So you've got a few options, you've got the flick or the top spin or the push if you need to. Okay, I'm gonna be ready for that top spin first choice. Okay. Now nice. he's ready, got that top spin in, let's try a few then. That time I felt like I couldn't quite top spin it, it was coming a bit short, so I went for the top spin, no, I can't get it, I'm gonna try and push that ball back nice and steady. And that time it was a long, more of a kicking side spin, top spin serve. And again, I had to go against that spin, like we mentioned in the previous tip, aimed across where Dan's bat started. And nice controlled top spin shot, not trying to go for too much speed. So I'm getting on the front foot in the rally without making those unforced errors. Okay, so tip number five is committing to your return choice. Quite often we see players, they're indecisive if they're a bit worried about these tricky serves. So they're half going for a push, half a flick, and they're not really committing to one or the other. So it's important you play that ball, you select your shot, and you stick to your choice. 
If you make a mistake, you can learn from that in the future. If you're going half and half and not really committing one way or another, you don't really learn to adapt to these serves and play a positive return in the long term. So when Dan serves to me, I need to use those cues that we spoke about earlier. So the bat angle and that contact point, make my decision early of what shot I'm gonna play and commit to it. Okay. So let's have a look. If Dan serves to me now, I'm gonna go for a flick. So I saw there wasn't much backspin. Early on, I committed to the flick. I wasn't half and half with the push and flick. I went for that ball. And even if you make a mistake there, it's about learning from that and changing the next ball. So there I saw quite early that Dan brought his bat back. As we spoke about earlier in tip number one, he brought the bat back quite far. So I had a good idea that that serve was gonna come long. And again, his body shape was angled heavily towards my backhand corner. So that gave me a good clue that it was gonna be in my backhand side chose the top spin early, and it makes things a lot easier for you, right Dan? Yeah, it did, and a good point now. I shaped up very much so to go to cross court, that's how you read that. I need to try and catch you off guard, come on. Okay. There we go. So there I read early that the ball was just drifting long, and I committed to that top spin. Could have been quite easy there to get caught in that in-between stage of half a push and half a topspin, but you don't really learn and develop by doing that. If you commit to that shot early, you start to learn, was that the right shot, was it the wrong shot, and you don't get caught in that half and half stage. Yeah, and Tom, most mistakes in table tennis when players play loosely off a return of serve is when they're caught in between two minds. Is it short, is it long, or is it topspin, is it backspin? Like exactly you say, right. You've got to be positive and believe in what you think, because in the long term you learn from it more. Exactly right, that indecision causes mistakes. So there we go guys, there was five tips to improve your receive off serve. Now remember it's really important to watch out for the angle of the bat, the contact and the cues of your opponent. Absolutely right. Now another thing to bear in mind is having a nice soft touch on the ball, getting that dwell on the rubber. So when you're making that decision on the return, you don't want to have a firm and hard contact too harsh on the ball. You want to get that dwell, whether it's a flick, a topspin or a push, nice soft relaxed hands and loose grip. Yeah, it's like having that feeling, isn't it? Having that nice touch exactly. on the ball. Remember also, look for the ball. When you're receiving the serve, look for the long ball. If it comes long, go for the spin shot. It's really going to help you make your game more positive, put more pressure on your opponents. So guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments below what other tips you have for returning these nasty spinny serves. For now guys, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks, Thanks for watching. watching.